Maybe our left-handed or right-handed rectangles give us a little bit too much of an over approximation or a little bit too much of an under approximation. So let's see if we can come up with something else that gets us a little bit closer to the actual area. So we can also do what we call midpoint rectangles. So our function is 1 over x, and we're going from 1 to 5, and we want to use four midpoint rectangles. So we're going to start by breaking up our interval. We're going from 1 to 5. We need to split it into four even sections. So obviously it's pretty easy if we split it um, at every whole number, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's gonna, and 5. That's going to give us four rectangles. But the difference is with midpoint rectangles, what you're going to do, what we're going to do is it's a midpoint, so we're going to go halfway in between each interval. So we're going to go to 1.5, and that's going to dictate the height of our rectangle. So it has a width of 1, but its height is dictated by the 1.5. Same thing for the next one. We're going to go halfway in between 2 and 3, which would be 2.5 and that's going to dictate the height of the next rectangle. 3.5 and 4.5. So what the midpoint rectangles do is they kind of sort of balance themselves out because on this curve, the left side of the rectangle is a little bit of an under approximation, but then the right side of the rectangle is a little bit of an over approximation. So you're missing a little bit, but then you add a little bit extra. So it kind of balances itself out. It's not completely symmetric, but um, this clearly is a better approximation of the area under that curve. Um, so let's find the area of all these. The curve is 1 over x, so the y values are going to be the reciprocal of the x values. So 1.5 is the same as 1 half. So the height would be two-thirds, the width is one, so the area is two-thirds. Uh, 2.5 is five-halves, so that area, that height is going to be two-fifths times the width is one. 3.5 is seven-halves, so the height is going to be two-sevenths, width of one, so the area is two-sevenths. 4.5 is nine-halves, so the y value is two-ninths. So, uh, I'm not going to lie, I could get a common denominator, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use my calculator on this one. Uh, what was the first one? Two thirds. Two thirds plus two fifths plus two sevenths plus two ninths. Ooh, 496 over 315 which is approximately, oops, too many numbers, oh, about one and a half, 1.575 for the area under that curve. Now that's closer to the actual area under the curve. It's still not there exactly, but that's pretty darn close. Okay, so midpoint, you split it up in intervals, and then you go halfway in between each interval to get the height of your rectangles. Any questions about that? Now, I think y'all figured out when you were working on the worksheet, you really don't have to have the graph to be able to do this. It is nice to have that visual representation, but you can still figure it out without it. You can... Uh, you just use the function. Okay, uh, let's look at another one. We're going to use trapezoids. We mentioned this the other day as a better approximation, um, and it's probably going to give us our best approximation, honestly, um, because once we draw them in there, you'll see how much closer to the curve it is. So this graph is negative x squared plus 9. We're going between 0 and 3, and we're going to use three trapezoids. So that makes it easy. Each interval is going to have a width of 1. So let's set up our trapezoid. So if we're going from 0 to 1, 
That's going to be the side of our trapezoid. We're going to go up to our y value of 9, and we're going to go up to our y value of 8. That's going to be the slanted end of our trapezoid. Now, you're probably used to most trapezoids have two slanted ends, but there is no rule in mathematics that says that they do. Technically, you only have to have one slanted end, and that's what we're going to have with these. The right side, if you kind of tilt your head to the right, you can see the right side is completely vertical. So that's one of our trapezoids. Then we go from the y value at 1 to the y value at 2. And honestly, our curve is almost linear there. <clears throat> so that's our second trapezoid. And then because of this curve, when we go from 2 to 3, the y value at 3 is 0, so that last one really is not a trapezoid. It's really just a triangle. Okay, it's really just a triangle. So let's find these areas. So the area of a trapezoid, if you will recall, is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. Now, uh, you may want to turn your paper sideways. I think this helps to kind of visualize this. I look at it this way. That's why I'm standing up right now. So one half times my base one is the bottom when I'm standing this way. So that is nine plus base two. That's the top, the y value for two, which is eight. And the height is the width of the interval, which is one. So that's one half of 17. I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. Okay, when I do the second one, I've got one half. My bottom is eight. The top is five. And the height is the width of the interval, which is one. So that is one half of 13. And I mentioned that the last one's really a triangle, but let's keep the trapezoid idea going on. Uh, the base 1 is 5, base 2 is 0, but there's not a top horizontal piece, and the width is 1, so that is 1 half times 5. So notice all these end up with 1 half again, so we're getting ready to add them all together so we can factor out that 1 half. We had 1 half times 17, 1 half times 13, and 1 half times 5. So we can factor out the 1 half. So we get 1 half times 35, which is 17.5. Okay, and obviously that one is pretty darn close to the actual area under the curve. Obviously, I probably could have zoomed in on this graph a little bit more, and you could see a little bit more difference between the sides of that trapezoid and the curve, but they're pretty close because the curve is so steep. Okay, so to this point, trapezoidal approximation is our best approximation, but you can still use the others, and they're going to ask you to use the others on the exam. They don't, they don't necessarily prefer one over another, they're going to tell you specifically which one to use. Okay, so 